I think what would make yoga a lot better is if they had a snack break in the middle. That's just my opinion. So today, back by popular demand, we have yeah. Taylor Jane. Taylor Jane. Who's excited? So, it's senior year of college. Here's me over here trying to figure out the easiest freaking classes I can take to graduate. I literally need elective credits at this point. So I get my shit together, figure everything out, and it turns out I'm one credit short. So, what's the easiest one credit class I can take? I think to myself. Yoga. People fucking love yoga. It's gotta be great. How hard can Downward Dog be? for 50 minutes twice a week. I can do this. Well, my friends, me not knowing two shits about yoga and all the different strains and breeds and types, pick Kundalini Yoga because I like the name. I couldn't have gone with gentle yoga or deep breathing yoga or beginning yoga. No, I pick Kundalini Yoga because it reminds me of the word tortellini, which I apparently associate with good things in my mind. So let's just go to day one of yoga. So I'm like really into this. I dig out my yoga pants, think about making some green juice. I'm trying to be very optimistic. I'm ready to go. So I walk into the room and it is completely matted. The floors are matted. The walls have pads all over them. The fucking ceilings might as well have pads. What is going on here? I feel like I'm in a room where they lock insane people in. And then I was, you know, trying to remain optimistic and I was like, well, this is cool. I don't have to bring a yoga mat around campus and carry that thing all day. Sanitation is highly questionable but let's overlook that. So then my teacher comes in and she is this older woman, white canvas clothing, comes wearing one of the like, I don't even know what they're called, like yogi turban, like hats. Okay, this is cool. I can do this. So she sits in the front of the class and starts to explain these noise vibrations that we're going to be making with our mouths. And I'm just over here like trying to get in crisscross formation with my legs. We're talking about how these noise vibrations are going to affect our spiritual mind. So I'm like keeping an open mind. I'm trying to like grasp how that affects your physical mind. But then there's this little in voice inside of me that's like, science. You fucking love science. Scientific evidence is great. I'm not very good with spiritual things. I have a very practical mind. And the reality of me doing noise vibrations every single day with my mouth to increase my spiritual mind is highly unlikely. So then the lady tells us, and keep in mind this is before we have even begun to move our bodies and do actual yoga, she tells us that we should be taking ice cold showers every morning to awaken the mucous membranes. First of all, if you think I'm gonna wake up at 6.30 in the morning and a cold shower is going to be my motivation to wake up my mucous membranes, you're batshit crazy. I took ice cold showers for a year in Jordan and I'm not about to voluntarily do that again when we have access to hot water. If you wanna clear out those mucous membranes, go for it. Good for you. Good luck trying to tell 40 college kids to get in an ice cold shower. Wrong demographic. So then she explains this thing called breath of fire. I will insert a clip right now. I'm over here breathing like I just ran a freaking marathon, about to pass out, and I'm not exaggerating. Stars were seen. So turns out this is the theme of kundalini yoga. These breath of fires take place every class, almost every move that we do. Great. I'm going to be the first person to pass out in a yoga class and potentially die. The possibilities are endless. Then we move on to a move called fish in a pan, which is exactly what it sounds like. You lay on your stomach, let your whole body relax, and then literally spaz your arms and legs for five minutes. This was entertaining for, you know, 30 seconds tops, but five fucking minutes of being a fish in a pan. The first couple weeks, I tried to be the best fish in a pan I could be. I flopped and flopped. 
But sometimes you want to be the fisherman and not the dying fucking fish. Might have been a little too metaphorical. It made sense in my head. Right after fish in a pan, no break to regain your sanity or anything, we go into Roaring Seal. Again, exactly what it sounds like. You might be thinking those two adjectives don't go together, and you are right. What is a roaring seal? And how is this beneficial to my health and my spiritual mind? So just imagine, here's 40 college kids in this matted room on their stomachs in seal stretch, and in order to have the vibrations hit the right part of the spiritual mind, you have to stick out your tongue while you're roaring. I'm just gonna give you a second to visualize this. So after we do all of our moves, we roar, we flop, we do lots of intriguing stuff, then we sing the sunshine song. Now, the lyrics are something that you would hear in a kindergarten classroom that it sounds like we are a kindergarten yoga cult. I will play you a clip of the sunshine song right now. It's almost so catchy that it's creepy. I find myself walking home from yoga in the dark, singing the fucking sunshine song in my head. So this week, this is the point in my yoga career where I said, fuck you yoga, I don't like you. I don't want to take cold showers, nor do I want to flop in a pan like a fish or roar like a seal, as appealing as those three things sound. This is where I put my foot down, which clearly hasn't worked out too well because I'm still enrolled in yoga for five more weeks. One freaking credit. That's my yoga story from hell. Luckily, my yoga teacher is currently on a spiritual awakening journey in India. If you liked this rant, make sure to click the thumbs up button so I know. Let me know down below if you want more Taylor rants. If you enjoy this shirt and you want it on your body, then there's a link down below and a code. Yes, the Christmas tree is still in the background. Maybe next month we'll take it down.